Finding a great place to call home is often quite challenging in and around the Baltimore metro area. In today's video, here's what we're gonna do. If you're not into living in the city and you wanna look for a great spot in the suburbs, we're jumping in and we're looking at the pros and cons of living in Harford County, Maryland. And we're getting after it right now. Now, for those of you that don't know me, it's your first time to our channel. My name is Adam Taylor. I run the Living in Baltimore, Maryland channel here, and I want to welcome you. Now, if you are looking to learn all about life in Maryland, great news, you are in the right spot. We do videos talking about living here, working here, chilling here, and most importantly, getting out and enjoying all Maryland has to offer. So if that is the info you're looking for, please consider hitting the subscribe button down below. Don't forget to give the little bell a click. That way you're alerted every time we put out another video just like this one. Now, right now, my team and I, we are fielding calls from all over the world. Text messages and emails are just flooding in of folks just like you that are looking to make a move right here to Maryland. And you know what? We absolutely love it. So if you're thinking about making a move, my team and I, hey, we would love to help you in your transition here to Maryland, but we just need one thing from you. And that's for you to reach out to us. So please give us a call, shoot us a text, send us an email, whatever you need to do. My team and I, we've got your back. We're moving right here to Maryland. The first pro of living in Harford County is that it's close to Baltimore. Typically throughout most of the county, you can get to Baltimore within a 35 to 40 minute drive with no traffic. In addition to that, you can get to places like BWI Airport, which is a major airport here in the Baltimore metro area, in about 45 minutes. So getting to these points, and the key being with no traffic, is a piece of cake. You head down probably Route 152, 155, or Route 24, hop on Interstate 95, and boom, you're down in the city before too long. Now, let's flip it around the other way. Let's head north and look at going to places like Philadelphia, New York. Now, the great thing is you're gonna cut off about 30 minutes of commute time getting to those northern points. So in reality, you could get to Philadelphia in about an hour and 45 minutes, and conversely to New York in about three hours or so just by living in Harford County. It essentially leapfrogs you up 95 to get to these northern points. Another pro of living in Harford County are the public schools. Now, those of you that are parents, here's where you wanna tune in and really perk your ears up. The schools here are rated really well. You can check out websites like greatschools.org. You can look at Harford County Public Schools website, which is hcps.org, and get individual school ratings for your particular student. Now, the other thing that I'd like to mention is Harford County does a tremendous job in giving our students options once they get to high school. You know, you see, I went through the traditional public school system where it's just, you know, your math, English, science, and some PE sprinkled in there and got my high school diploma and went on to college. Nowadays, they're getting direct training in specific areas of study to the point where they can even receive college credits towards a degree right in high school. So Harford County has done a tremendous job of that. And I urge you to visit their website to learn more about their magnet programs if you have a high schooler. Pro number three about living in Harford County, Maryland are all the outdoor spaces you're going to get to enjoy as a result of living in Harford County. Now, let me tell you all about them. You've got tons of state parks. You've got Rock State Park, which features the king and queen seat. It's the highest point in Harford County, Maryland. And the view from the king and queen seat is spectacular. Now, I'm a little shaky and a little scared of heights because there's no guardrails around the king and queen seat. And uh, <laughs> I will just tell you, if you are afraid of heights, it's up there and it'll it'll get your heart moving. Uh, the second spot is Kilgore Falls. And it's also located in Northern Harford County, but this Kilgore Falls is sort of towards the White Whiteford Street area. And uh, it's a beautiful waterfall in the summertime, especially lots of kids go out there and they just frolic around in the waterfall and it's a lot of fun. And then the final park that I wanna bring to your attention is actually Susquehanna State Park. And as a matter of fact, my kiddos and I, we were just up at Susquehanna State Park and had a blast last weekend. We took a dog for a walk uh, right along the river there. There's actually a trail where an old railroad track used to be. Then we you know, started hiking around and we were like, you know what, let's go up to the Conowingo Dam which is at the northern end of the park and check things out up there. So we hopped in our car, went on up there and it is fantastic. And you know, I've lived in Maryland pretty much my entire life and I'd never been to the bottom of the Conowingo Dam. You saw all these photographers out there with their big lenses on their cameras looking to take great pictures of bald eagles. As a matter of fact, they actually have a contest for photographers 
to see who can get the best bald eagle shot that they were promoting at the dam there. Some other great things that you can do include the Mon Pa Trail in Bel Air. And I did a video probably about a year and a half ago of a vlog of Bel Air, Maryland. And we'll go ahead and put a card up here for you to check out. The Mon Pa Trail is fantastic. It's a great running trail. It's got some hills in it, so you can do some good training on it. And they just actually connected the middle part of the trail. So the trail was actually broken up into three segments, but now they've connected them all. And it's really cool because you, you know, go from the William Street side, and now you can sort of weave your way through the town of Bel Air to get to the northern part of the trail. And the last thing I'll leave you with regarding outdoor space in Harford County, those of you that are boaters or fishermen or crabbers, you're in luck because we have three major rivers here in Harford County. We have the Susquehanna River, which is the furthest one north. Then you have the Bush River, which is sort of in the Abingdon, Aberdeen area. And then finally, you have the Gunpowder River. All three of these rivers flow right out to the Chesapeake Bay. So my friends, if you're an outdoor lover or love doing stuff outside, great news, Harford County is a good spot for you to call home. The fourth pro of living in Harford County is the restaurant and brewery scene in Harford County. Now, when I did my vlog about a year and a half ago, I took you down a trip right down Main Street and you can see all the restaurants pretty much in Bel Air. There's a lot of great spots, but that's not it in the county. You've got great places right on the water in Habity Grace. You've got some great crab houses. You've got stuff really developing out in the Falston area. There's so much great food in the county. You're bound to find something that you love. Now, what I did not talk about in that blog was the brewery scene. It is erupted here in Harford County. And you know what? You're gonna be able to go to tons of them and absolutely love them. So let's go through what's out there right now. On the Eastern side of the county, you have Hopkins Farm Brewery, which is sort of near Habity Grace. And they've done a great job where they've essentially converted a farm on over to a brewery. And each and every week, it seems like they've got events going on and it's, it's so much fun. So it's operational all year round. Now, as we head more towards like the center of the county, you've got places up north like Slate Farm Brewery and Falling Branch Brewery, which are two of my favorites that I really like. Now, when you come down into Bel Air, you've got two breweries right in the town of Bel Air. You have Alecraft Brewery and the granddaddy of them all, Independent Brewing. Now, Independent is conveniently located right next to the Ma and Pa Trail in Bel Air. And what's cool about that, those of you that are outside running they do a lot of 5k races and, and stuff during you know like the 4th of July holiday or even during a turkey trot and right after the event is over everybody floods into independent so if you like a great beer and great spots to eat Harford County got it all now, before we jump into the cons, if you are finding value in this video, do me a favor, if you would, to keep the wind in my sails, to keep me going, to keep me motivated. I would really appreciate it if you'd hit that like button down below. Now, don't forget to comment with any questions you have regarding Harford County, Maryland. Now, let's just dive right into it. We're gonna get right into the cons here. And con number one has to be sort of the commute times that you need to be prepared for when living in Harford County, especially those of you that are working in downtown Baltimore or points further south like the airport or Washington DC or Columbia, your commute times can exceed an hour in each direction easily. And in addition to that, if you are going to Baltimore City or again, Point South, you're gonna have to pay tolls. You're gonna have to pay toll to go through one of the two tunnels, or if you're trying to shortcut it and go across the key bridge, you're gonna have to pay a toll there. So just be prepared to not only sit in your car for an extended period of time, but also to brace your wallet because you are gonna have not only fuel expense, you're gonna have toll expense as well. The second con you should be aware of is the increased cost of living in Harford County, Maryland. Now, this is happened because developers have come in, they built up a bunch of houses and lots of folks are starting to move here because the area is directly connected to Baltimore, like Baltimore County being the main spot, you know, is pretty much built up and there's very limited space to build. So home buyers are pushing further away from the city and trying to find a deal. Problem is all of them are trying to do that and it's driving prices, especially in the housing sector on up. Now, in comparison to the suburbs around Baltimore, Harvard County is still quite a bit cheaper than Baltimore County, Howard County especially, and Anne Arundel County. So do your homework, we'll help you out with that. We've got another video coming up here probably in the next month or two, and we're gonna dive into the cost of living, not only in Harford County, but in Maryland as a whole. Con number three you need to check out, or be aware of rather, is the flooding that can happen. And in reality, 
the flooding really typically only occurs in Harford County in the southern part of the county where we have areas that are pretty much right at sea level. So a spot that seems to flood out a lot is right on Philadelphia Road, which is also Route 7 in the Cresswell area. And you'll hear it all the time of cars getting stuck there when heavy downpours happen. But you can see flooding in places like Joppa Town. You can see it's in parts of Aberdeen and even Havity Grace. So just be aware, if you're looking to purchase in one of those towns, you're gonna potentially experience some flooding if your home is in close proximity to a waterway. The next kind I wanna bring your attention is the Route 40 corridor in Harford County. Now Route 40 is a highway that runs parallel to Interstate 95 directly out of Baltimore City and goes all the way up to the Delaware line in Cecil County. Now, when Route 40 comes through Harford County, areas like Edgewood, Aberdeen, these aren't the most desirable areas in Harford County. So if you're looking to make a purchase, rent, or even stay, you know, say you're just traveling here for a soccer tournament or something, a lot of the hotels are located right along Interstate 95 and some of them can hit those areas. You just want to be aware of things. Harford County Sheriff's Office is aware that these are problem areas in the county, but just do your research, do your due diligence before visiting these spots. And ultimately, if you are looking to purchase a home, I would suggest that you really look into that. My team and I, we can help you out and we can answer any and all of your questions, whether you're purchasing in and around the Route 40 corridor or anywhere else in the county. So my friends, look, those are the pros and cons of living in Harford County, Maryland. Now, if a move to Harford County is in your near future, hey, we we would love to help you out in that transition, but we just need one thing from you, and that's for you to reach out to us. So please give us a call, shoot us a text, send us an email, or fan us down with smoke signal, whatever you need to do. Now, before you go, I picked out a video that I think you're gonna wanna check out next. Make sure you check that out, and don't forget, my team and I, we have your back when moving to Maryland. From Baltimore, down the bay, all the way to the beaches in Ocean City, Maryland, we got you covered. Till the next video, my friends. Hey, we will catch you later.